Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free Disciple Movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. It is indeed a very beautiful day, uh, the very first day of 2022. I must say, we have unfinished business from 2021 that we should be talking about in 2022. I am quite worried that everything is now seen, everything now seems like it's going to normal. What happened to Stephen? Abi Sylvester or Romani? Why is the public that started or generated the original discussion, why is the public kept in the darkness? In my humble opinion, I personally feel that the, the public is being kept in the dark. And yes, we have moved to a new year, but let us not be like those people whose parents are not going through what this, these guys' parents are going through. It is extremely sad that anyone could even think that this matter could be forgotten or forgiven. I don't know who it is that I'm speaking to, but I want us to talk about this. This is a very important matter. Let me see if I can bring one or two people to join me live. Guys, please help me mention Pepe Room. All of you at Pepe Room. The handle is the Pepe Room underscore. Please yeah. mention her. She's supposed to be here with me this afternoon. Help me. Mention Good afternoon. Her. Good afternoon, my darling sister. How are you doing? Can you move a little bit back so we can see all of your faces? How are you? We're lost, sir. All right. Um, a copy of the uh, report can be seen on uh, Ubi Franklin's page. And I I'm going to talk about it uh, right there on Ubi Franklin's page. You can see that. And this is it. The Coroner's Ordinance, Chapter 41, Report of Medical Practitioner. And it says, I certify that the cause of death, in my opinion, to be acute lung injury due to chemical intoxication in a background of blunt force trauma. In a background of blunt force trauma. Uh, this is available on uh, Obi Franklin's page and it is labeled breaking news. And Ubi Franklin went on to comment. He said, the autopsy, the autopsy uh, result of Sylvester Oromoni Jr. have been released. According to the report, he passed on from acute lung injury due to chemical intoxication in a background of blunt force trauma. My question, which happens to be one of the biggest questions anybody would be asking right about now, is... Um, we also heard from the owners of Doen College. I'm not sure they've been invited. If they've been invited, it's not made public. Another thing I like to raise, I hope they are not thinking of opening the school. Oh. Because Nigeria, we sabi sweep something on that carpet. Everybody would not forget about them. So I've got somebody with me right now. Hello? Hello? What's your name, beautiful lady? 
Hello? Can't hear me. All right. Uh, let me bring a couple more people up here. What do you guys think? Okay. Hello. Hello. Copy. Can I see you? Yes, you can. All right. Okay. So what is your opinion? Okay. Um, basically, like you said, I agree with you. Nigerians, we are experts in sweeping things under the carpet. I don't know, probably, if new things get to trend every second and we tend to forget the one that's behind. But it's going to be really painful if Sylvester's case is one of those cases that will be forgotten. About the autopsy, I have my doubts, you know. I'm a medical doctor. And oh, wow, you're a medical doctor? Yes, I am a medical doctor. And you... I have my doubts. What? Are you practicing medicine or...? Yes, I'm practicing. I'm a resident family physician in Saudi Arabia. Oh, wow. So, nice to meet you. I still have time you. to... I can see that your blog is a... You run a blog. <laughs> I barely wow. have time for it though, but, you know, I have my official page. So, um, like I was saying, the autopsy has the right to a second opinion, you know. Mm. If you are saying that it's um, an inhalational injury, chemical inhalational injury, and you are seeing the histological features of chemical inhalation, now you have to tell us if it's an acute or a chronic event. Mm. It could be a long-term inhalational exposure that you are seeing there with the reactions, histological reactions there. Mm. You, have, you have to tell us if this is an acute reaction or it's a chronic thing that is there. It is very important. Now, number four says acute lung injury. So it's not chronic. It's yes. acute. Acute lung injury. We also have an enlarged liver. Yes. Which is, uh, which is synonymous with poisoning and uh, uh, a substance problem. Yes, it could also be, could not also be, could not really be enlarged because of a poisoning. It could be enlarged because of a trauma as well. Because of the trauma, yeah. We also have um, cerebral edema with raised intracranial pressure. That could also, that could also be the result of trauma. a traumatic head injury. Yes. Uh, what is also seen is scalded upper lip. We saw that the lip was scalded. Yes. yes. Uh, we, I didn't understand. I thought he reacted to some medication. You know, Stephen Johnson syndrome has those kind of scald looking um, uh, bruises. But Stephen Johnson is not lo uh, usually uh, local to only the lip. Stephen Johnson is not. Stephen Johnson is not particularly to only the mouth. Stephen Johnson yes. is actually a drug-related reaction to the soft to sulfur-containing medications such as septrine and the rest of them. Yeah. And it manifests across the body. You have lesions across the body, not just around. Yes, of course. Of course. So I did because a lot of people were saying he reacted to something. I didn't quite buy into that. Then he also has acute they also saw acute gastric erosion. Okay. Let me send you. Let me send you a copy of the report so we can look at it together. What's your handle on Instagram? My handle on Instagram is i frankenstein. I I underscore Frankenstein. No, no. I capital letter Frankenstein. Yes. Two. Okay, Franken two. Oh, that's two point oh. Is that you? You can send to this. You can send to this handle. 
Okay, let me just copy this handle from here. Sorry if I missed. Uh, just Hello, give me one second. Let me address Happy New this. Year. Hello, my doctor. Uh, certified. Because we have a doctor in the house, which is rare. Mm. So I want us to discuss. I'm, I'm so lucky. I don't know how lucky I as in <laughs> certified black gossip. Okay, I've seen you. Okay, I've sent it to you. Okay. So well, we're, we're fortunate enough to have a doctor in the house, a physician um, who understands what an autopsy is. So we can we can look at it together. Now, Pepe Room, what is your while he's looking at um, the autopsy, so we can discuss. What is your take? I know you've been very active on this particular matter. Uh, mm -hmm. You've been quite unhappy. Uh, what else we have been uh, fed with. So what is your position right now? Um, my position right now is I'm happy that the autopsy is out. And, um, and I think that it kind of gives oh, us clarity of, because... This particular autopsy is from Worry. It's from Worry, yes. yes. Um, I, I do believe that the autopsy is correct because we can look at go and research the credential of the particular pathology it's credible um mm. and um i'm just i'm just concerned right because i when i read the full statements on punch because i read everything including the autopsy and what the um, police said was the reason for releasing the house masters and everything. The police stated that they haven't, there hasn't been enough to establish that murder was committed. So for me, going with the autopsy, that I do think that what else can cause a boy to die from blunt force trauma, chemical uh, intoxication, if it wasn't something that was done to him? So with what I read, I think that there's still, there's enough for, you know, a charge of murder to be laid out. So I don't understand why the, why the um, house masters, I understand that they've been released on bail pending trial. I, I get that because that's a normal procedure. But for the police to state that there hasn't been a case for murder as of yet, you know, and psychology report, it would have been better if they said they are waiting for the toxicology report and to complete everything before they say that there isn't a case for murder. So that's, that's my only issue here right now. Because they're trying to tell us that he didn't, he didn't die due to harm that was caused on him. That's what the police are saying. So that's, my, that's where I'm yeah. stuck on. But I think a lot of us knew that something severe happened to Sylvester. And whatever he took, you know, um, or was given to him was forced on him. I don't think anybody would want to drink a substance that can cause that much harm. And I don't know if you read the end of the um, um, report. They said that in his, um, in his stomach, they found a substance that was dark-like, but it wasn't due to food in, you know, in um, someone giving him food or anything like that. So I don't know if you guys so saw that part. His stomach. Yes, the contents of his stomach. Yes. Yeah, so that's also another part of it. So that means there was a substance that was found, the chemical substance that was found in his stomach. So that's where I am right now. I think that I believe Sylvester, Sylvester from day one, I don't think he had a reason to lie. Um, but I'm just concerned that the police are not really being proactive in this case. That's my only concern that it feels um, because of the way they are handling it. Mm. I had hope when they first detained the... Um, the house masters and the, the boys, when they were released on bail, I understood that they were minors. But to say that there's no case of murder is a problem. You know, it's a problem. And I don't like the way the, the, the police are handling it. That's, that's my only issue here. Mm. Okay, thank yeah. you, Pepe Room. Um, we've got the doctor here. Doctor, please, what's your name? So we can, uh, we cannot just call you doctor, we'll call you your name. Franklin. Okay, Franklin. Oh, yeah, I get where the Frankenstein came from. So, uh, have you been able to peruse um, the autopsy? Okay, let me just um, talk briefly on autopsy. You know, generally, um, when you mention the word autopsy, you know that it's an investigation to determine the cause of death. Mm. Now, autop autopsy, the way we do autopsy usually is that 
there's an external examination of the body and then there's an internal examination of the body as well. This is done by a certified pathologist in a certified autopsy facility. So if you are talking, if you want, first of all, in an autopsy event, in the external part of the examination of the autopsy, you look at the body for scars, for bruises, for lesions, and of course, for anything that is concerning. Old scars, new scars, you look at the body for it. And then you conduct x-rays if they are necessary. You conduct MRIs. You conduct CT scans. All these are available in Nigeria, so it should not even be an excuse. Then you want to go further to do an internal autopsy where you dissect the body and look out for vital organs. Most times it could take a while for you to conclude on one particular autopsy at a certified period of time. You may need to harvest some of the organs and keep and continue your autopsy while you send the body back to the people to, for their burial if they want to do a burial they're in a hurry to do a funeral. So having gone through Sylvester's autopsy reports and they are saying acute lung injury, gastric erosions and all that, you cannot negate the fact that these things are something that was induced. The whole, it mm -hmm. was induced. It was induced. If there was acute gastric erosion, then what was he given to drink to cause the erosion of his stomach lining? I do not want to, I do not want to use medical jargons because I know a lot of people here would want to understand what I'm saying. Simple. So what did you give to him to drink for him to have gastric erosions? What are the things that could possibly affect the stomach lining? Acidic drinks or beverages, toxic chemicals, drugs, and a lot of them. You do not need to have PUD before you have gastric erosions. If you give me a glass of caustic and I drink it as an initiation ceremony, drink and maybe be tough man, it erodes my tummy. Now you do not even need to you do not need to stop at the tummy, the level of the tummy to find your gastric it's erosion. Just sodium, sodium. down. And you see all the erosion starting from the mouth to the esophagus the and then the stomach itself. You see all the erosions there. Now if you if we go down to the if we go down to the liver and you start seeing the inflammations there and all that. All these are reactions already that are happening from what he took. The liver was all poison. Yeah. Yes. We have a lot of organs in our body that compensates that compensates for um, a lot of things that happen. Let me try to be very simple. For instance, if you if one is decompensating, the liver is the liver is signaled, the kidney is signaled, the heart is signaled, and all these organs are put through stress in a difficult period. Of a human being, if you're dying, for instance, the heart works more to give you blood, the kidneys work more, the liver they work more. All this will undergo changes in the whole process, the activities I just mentioned. So, if you are seeing hepatic hepatomegaly, which is enlarged liver, if you are seeing it, you should query what is causing the hepatomegaly in that child, in that boy. Mm. Do you understand? You should look yeah. out for the hepatomegaly. What is making this liver enlarge? Is it because of decompensation that the liver is struggling to meet up demands? Now, I remember too that when we were talking about um, drug intoxications, we we're talking about looking about looking at the liver and uh, looking at the kidneys for, to expel drugs and chemicals. Now, if you give somebody a whole lot of chemicals to enjoy and all that, most of them go straight to the liver for a lot of degradation and then intoxication and then they pass through the kidney, through the urine and then they all are expelled out of the body. Everything that was revealed from that autopsy, I know the person that did that autopsy report in Central Hospital Worry. I worked in Central Hospital Worry. You know, I did my housemanship. Very credible. Very credible. Wow. I know, I know the former... Very credible. I know the former... Uh, I know the former pathologist that was... Know that person. Dr. Wancho. Yes. Dr. Wanchoko was a pathologist. Now, this particular one, he is super credible. He is very credible. As a matter of fact, if, you, if, I, was, if I were to add another pathologist, I would have added Professor Udokuma to it, and we have a team of credible pathologists. No lies are detected from that autopsy report. No lies at all. Everything there that was revealed in that autopsy report is a series of traumatic events that happened 
in that in that one, organs you are seeing one after the other and i have seen that he told you now that there's a background of trauma associated trauma so as he was drinking trauma. it they're beating him up force as yeah. he was taking whatever him to ingest as their own initiation ceremony he was no, being beaten as well ceremony because we are not we, we we let's not talk about what we don't know what let's deal yes. with because they can say ah you you are the one saying we are not sure it could be a fight it could be uh, yes ever it was we are not sure and i don't want us to see but what we are dealing with is a certified autopsy report that was presented on social media and we have a yes. doctor here who is uh analyzing this even me, I'm not a doctor, but I understand medicine very well. I understand medicine to a very high uh, um, level, but I'm not qualified to give a verdict. You, doctor, on the other hand, are qualified. So this is a great opportunity we have to actually look at everything. Let's not spoil it, because once we start bringing things like initiation, then we're now, we now spoiling the yeah. case. Let's That's true. deal with That's the... True. That's... If, you, if you want... If Trauma my could have come yes. from beating, could have come from yes. pushing. They can push him yes. and hit the head. Do you understand? Could have come from yes. uh, them using things to hit him. Do you understand? But that issue is they yes. mentioned flak. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right in the autopsy as well on his back. I don't know if you, you saw that. And mm. also, as a doctor, I want to ask you, when they say acute, because when I Google acute, it means difficult and unwanted, right? Uh, that no. means something that is forced on you. It means like something that, you know, it's chronic. It's uh, in the kit for a while. In the kit different from this, let me give you the simple definition for acute and chronic. Because mm. if you are trying to talk about a medical condition, you say acute, subacute, acute and mm. chronic, and chronic. You understand? Mm. Now, if I say something acute, it's an event that is occurring between the period of one to three weeks. That is what it, it means. So, from hours okay. to three weeks, anything that three happens weeks. between hours is acute. So, I can say I, I have an acute headache. That means it's occurring within now to three weeks. Now, once it's crossing three weeks, it's beginning to go into chronic. Anything extending from three weeks to months is chronic. That's what it means. So if the autopsy is telling you acute this, acute that, it means that it was a recent event. It wasn't a long-standing event. So if you are seeing, if I say the, the um, liver was chronically enlarged, it means that it has a long-term chronic inflammation of the liver. And then we need to start talking about conditions of the liver that can, any condition of the liver that could cause liver to enlarge in, I forgot how old Sylvester is, in that particular age of Sylvester, which is so, not something we want to cons consider in this, event. Do you understand? So everything yeah. that he was having there it was a chronic, was an acute event, and it fits whatever we are talking about this moment. Hmm. Now, for instance, if he had a chronic PUD, for instance, then we, it can be a totally different scenario oh he probably had an ulcer that's why there's a gastric if, erosion if, if, chronic PUD, if so, in a chronic pud even in a chronic pud that it freeze you will not see gastric erosion who says you are going you to see gastric on erosion? that level so the the investigations we do for pud is urea breath test and fecal occult blood that's what we do now if you are doing an endoscopy to check for gastric erosions it will not be a chronic event trust me mm -hmm. You will not find that child, and you will not see it as freshly as he has seen written on the autopsy. Now, another thing Those that the drug boy really suffered before he passed. He, he did not die an easy death. I don't know if you disagree with me, doctor. This was a painful, I... agonizing death. Please correct me if I'm wrong. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. If, you, if, you, if someone ingests a poison, a caustic, or a chemical. There are series... Maybe, maybe I just have to recommend um, something to you to read on the series of events that takes place on poisoning before the person, before the person actually dies, before the victim actually dies. It's a terrible, 
series of changes that takes place that eventually kills whoever that is taking a poison or a caustic. You have from gastric erosions to end yeah. organ damage. Okay, okay. Oh, now, even the gastric oh. alone, even the gastric erosions alone may not be able to kill instantly as the, the stomach lining is being eaten up by the caustic and further hydrochloric acid is being secreted. The kidneys are also shutting down as well. The liver, mm. the liver is also shutting. So there's a lot of events that takes place. This one is being triggered. It's like a chain reaction. This one touched this one. This one touched this one. And this one touched this one. And everything works together to kill the victim finally. So it doesn't happen instantly like a gunshot. It has to go through a process. Poisoning goes through a process and finally shuts whoever that took it down. Now, doctor, we the, the poisoning... Um, affected his stomach, affected his liver, affected his kidneys, affected his mouth, whatever the substance, let's not use the word poison, let's use substance. Because let's use to be more accurate. Now, combined, is already, this, this pain from this substance, whatever it is, is so painful. Then you now combine it with blunt Force in trauma. So he is suffering on a scale that no child should suffer. I don't know if I'm correct in saying that. It's my opinion. I'm not a medical doctor. I have to issue disclaimers from time to time. But this is what I perceive this to be. The doctor has explained how painful how agonizing the death from this substance could be or death induced by this substance could be and then the substance is not the only thing we also now have the blunt force trauma so one thing i can say in my humble opinion from reading this autopsy and from discussing with dr frank franklin today is that stephen uh, sylvester left this world in a way no human being deserves. Agonizing, an agonizing. It wasn't that they were fighting, he felt he hit his head. It wasn't like they slipped him something to drink. It was an intent. I don't know whether it is by him directly or by whoever it was to cause grievous bodily harm from my interpretation of this, of the findings um, of that autopsy. Uh, Dr. Franklin said he has worked one-on-one -on -one with the pathologist in question. What's the name of the pathologist again? Uh, sorry, I'm checking. What's the name of the pathologist again, Dr. Franklin? Dr. Clement McIntyre. Yes. That's one of them, I think. Doctor. Clement, yeah. Yeah, Doctor. Dr. Clement, Clement. So you work with McIntyre. him and you, 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 you personally, in your own opinion, can certify him to be a good pathologist. Do you see him as somebody who can be bribed to put his name on uh, from your experience with him? We are doctors. I know that you, doctors come in different shades, but you know, there's a level of training you attain and you would not be moved by money just to dent your image, dent your personality, dent your, prefer your profession. And you could be and, summoned you know, to court. You could be asked to testify and, on the oath. You know, for, in for instance, the former, the former pathologist before Dr. Clement came in was a permanent secretary in Delta State as well too. Dr. Juan Choco he was a permanent secretary as well too. That one is a, it's an outstanding pathologist before Dr. Oh. Clement came to another outstanding pathologist. Dr. Clement cannot get his image, not for this kind of case. It's not possible. I can vouch he did not alter that result. Everything is in synchrony. If you are talking from, if you are going from the um, acute lung injury, remember too that acute lung injury can cause severe hypoxia. And then yeah. severe hypoxia means, it means that Oxygen is not being delivered. Stop. To the vital. 
Oxygen would not go to the vital tissue, it would not go to the heart, it would not go to the brain, and this will aggravate cerebral edema, which is what you are seeing in that autopsy. Okay. So, be so because the lung was damaged, of course, the brain is going to suffer oxygen deprivation. Mm. So everything is in synchrony, and whatever Clement's, Clement is one of the best pathologists you can talk about. I'm not just talking of Delta State, I'm not trying to raise his ego, but he's one of the best pathologists you can talk about that is the gospel truth you can ask anybody when you want to do a credible histopathological finding come and look for dr clements i don't know how i got you today i don't know if i had paid money you see that's how i say god works with me if i had paid money to go and look for a doctor what are the odds of finding a doctor that worked with the pathologist what are the odds of finding a doctor and he just i just saw his I thought it was, it was going to be a fun somebody because his handle is, is, is more or less a gossip handle. I was like, ah, I don't know this guy. Maybe he will almost see analysis. See, as in, thank you so much, doctor. Thank you so Daddy, much. Please, did you talk about the, what? the, oh. the, the bruised flax um, on the back? Cool. You discussed that already. Doctor, let's talk about the bruised flax on the back. Where could those have come from? Now, we are not dealing with facts now. We are dealing with opinions. Yes, I've heard that initiation is all flogging on the back. I'm not saying it's an initiation. I'm just saying that... I I'm sure his parents will not have beaten him. Okay. So, and he was taken Let me try to paint. very poor condition. Let me try to paint a scenario here. For instance, we as doctors, okay, probably, okay, let me use, uh, let me give an example of while I was doing my internship in Central Hospital, Agbo. You know, I had this, I had this little uh, boy of um, six years that was brought into my clinic. I was doing my um, pediatric posting under Dr. Chukuma, a very sound consultant, a pediatrician. And of course, the boy came with, um, dislocation of the wrist and i was like oh what happened the father told me that um, he slipped and fell so i was like okay i examined the dislocation and i was writing my notes you know trying to send to the orthopedic and all that and then the consultant walks in walked into the clinic he saw this child he looked at me and he said what is the case here and i said oh this is um, a case of slip and fall domestic accident and he was like bring the child to my office and we brought the child to my, to my greatest amazement then my consultant looked at the hands took up the child's shirt and was showing me bruises on the child's back he was showing me marks on the child's thigh and all that now this was a case of non-accidental injury that is the diagnosis now how do you make a diagnosis of non-accidental injuries you see old scars there old scars to tell you that those injuries were inflicted by somebody the child did not fall now the whole truth mm -hmm. of the matter that just came from the father the father was beating the child to a pop and the child fell so the child had to talk at the end of the day and say my daddy was beating me yesterday and i fell why because i ate the food that was in the house there was no food it was just both of them the man started crying and was begging that he's sorry that he, the wife ran and left them so it was just both of them you know, so what I'm saying is, if you are seeing bruises at the back of Sylvester, whatever they were, whatever has happened to him may not have started at that particular day or at that particular point that he got them choked to this point. It would have been something that has been ongoing, repeated over time, and then you still have those bruises. They remember I said at the beginning of the discussion that autopsy does not just entail just cutting the, the body up and harvesting the organs and just going to check and see what, what changes have happened internally. For old scars too from the body, that's where the external autopsy comes in. You look at the body for old scars, at the body for everything that is concerning. And if you are seeing old scars from his body, like bruises, cane marks, you have to look for, if the bruises are from cane marks, if the bruises are from inflicted injuries, you have to look for it and probe for that. How did these injuries come in? How did these cane marks come in? Are they non accidental injuries where it will come in from. So if you are looking at that, you have to tie it up to whatever you are thinking. You know, we have agreed that we are not going to mention what we are thinking, but you have to tie it 
tie it up to whatever you are thinking, and I think it's also correct. Mm. I think he was mm. murdered. So, so, I think so he if he has, so, yeah, so if he has been bullied, he has been bullied repeated times. Those old scars that has that was seen on his body, those flanks and all that, flank scars and back scars, those things were all all signs of bully and oh, doctor, can also, we it should also be accounted for as well. Mm. Mm. Daddy Fish, mm. can we ask the doctor that with all the information he has given us as a doctor, is this something for, you know, bullying, murder, in any form, shape or form? Is this a case where you can say that, okay, you know how you, you, you diagnose that other child and say, okay, this is a case where the father has probably beaten the child before and that's why you saw, you know, now, scarring I, and everything. Yeah, with the other one, Pepe Ru. Mm. Because the father was there to break down into tears and confess. Mm. We are dealing with children who, ha I, I read through the lawyers that were defending these children. There were sons among them. Yes. So the yeah. children will be properly briefed, not to, not to, and vetted. Um, give out information. So right of course. now, what we can look at is a fact. If they say somebody had has acute gastric erosion, there's no other spiritual explanation. It means the stomach lining has corroded. Mm. What caused stomach lining to corrode in a short period of time? And especially, no medicine was found in his stomach. Neither yes. was any found in his stomach. So it, it's not likely that he ate something that he reacted to. It is most likely the ingestion of something caustic, which could be anything from an acid. It could even be an alkaline um, uh, substance, something extremely potent is what went into his stomach. Now, there's another thing here that um, I wanted to talk about. Sorry. The, uh, the scalded upper lip. You get scalding from my opinion, something very hot or something very mm. cold. Like hydrochloric acid in its conch state or uh, caustic soda. These are things that can cause the appearance of scalding. Now, acute lung injury. Doctor, I want to ask you, how do you think the lung injury came to, uh, to being? Because also the parenchyma uh, was noted red. How do you think, because we, we, we can understand that poison inside stomach affects, mm -hmm. affects liver, do you understand? Affects digestive system, esophagus, uh, ileum, duodenum, small and large intestine, we, we understand all that. But you see, yes. how did he inhale? For him to have lung damage, it's because the digestive system is not linked with the respiratory system unless what he swallowed also spilled over into his lungs, which there's a possibility. He could choke on something. Some goes into his stomach, some goes into his uh, airways. That's one way. Another way is he inhaled the vapors. To have okay. Lung let me. That is acute. But you please explain it to us. Analysis. The analogy is a very, very smart and, of course, intelligent one. Of course, the digestive system and the respiratory system are independent. They are not. They, there's no connection and all that. But there is a connection. Like I said, the esophagus and, of course, the windpipe. They are coming together. And yes. Now, it's very. It's a simple fact. How did this? chemical substance gets deposited in the lungs. It's simple. From choking, 
Mm. Mm. I often. suggested it, but I wanted you to so, say it. You something, you, you have every probability that it will be deposited in the lung. Now, if it's a chemical substance, if it's a concussion, it will get deposited in the lungs and cause what we call aspiration pneumonitis. It can cause acute lung injury, which it has there. It's simple. Now, another thing is, maybe he didn't choke when he was swallowing it, but he now vomited and choked on the vomit. Exactly. So, exactly. so trying to create all the possible scenarios to make sure that we can logically conclude on this autopsy. Because some people come and say, hey, the lungs are not related to the digestive. How do you, this is how we are showing you how the possibility. Either, now, also, another thing is, these caustic chemicals also have very caustic fumes. Some people well, well in, in the caustic fumes, it actually will not come into play. The best bet here is an aspiration pneumonitis. That was, so, that's what's going to be acute lung injury, an aspiration pneumonitis. For instance, most times you could tell, you could tell a patient that you're admitting for a surgery. After a surgery, or for instance, after a surgery, Usually, when I was doing my surgery rotations in Nigeria, of course, you tell the patient that, ah, madam, after you come out from theatre, please don't eat yet, oh, because just you are still under anesthesia, and we need to be we need to ensure that you have adequate bowel movement. There's bowel sound. You have passed flatus and all that, and you tell you that eat right now, and you start vomiting. You might vomit, and some of the contents of your vomit will go to your lung, and you have a pneumonitis. Hmm. And if those, you may have a pneumonitis, and that's another thing to battle with entirely. You know, you start oxygen and you start all those ones and you start doing aspiration and all that. You do not want to get to that particular part of it. So it is very clear that whatever he drank, most likely, because they gave a hydrochloric acid, to it. it might be a portion that has been, that it's a collection of a lot of toxic materials that you don't know where it's coming from for whatever purpose. He was being given if he drank that concussion and it wasn't palatable to his stomach or to his throat or anything there's every tendency that he's going to vomit it and then get it aspirated to add that to his lungs to his airways and get the pneumonitis that we're talking about so that mm. also spices that is for the lung injury that is for the gastric erosion the suffocation the hypoxia are all traceable to the cerebral edema that he has because the cerebral edema is resulting from hypoxia, which is in synchrony with the lung injury. Definitely. Now, some people were suspecting that he could have ingested engine oil. I, with seeing this autopsy, that was a story. Pepe Rube, didn't you hear that story? Yes, yes, I heard it. Engine oil, yes. Reading this oil. Report, I do not yes. think that anything short of caustic soda, hydrochloric acid, bleach, chlorine, these are the things that can cause this. Yeah, I don't think or engine oil cannot cause this. Oh, engine oil cannot cause this. Engine oil cannot cause this. There's something, that you, also, there's something yes. that you also need to there's something that you need to know as well, too. Now okay. for Remember that we, we have agreed here that we wouldn't say certain things. We try to filter what we are saying so that they won't say we are suggesting or trying to alarm the public with interactions. Yeah. So, for instance, if you give me, if, if you don't filter monkey tail, strong gene, hmm. put pepper, strong gene, put pepper, like, because I'm not sure whoever or whatever or whomever that is with him wanted to give him hydrochloric acid to drink and kill him. Mm. It was horrible. Now, if you, if you give me strong gin alcohol, you add alligator, to, alligator pepper to it, you add this one to it, you add that one just to make a concussion that you have tested and it hits your head really hard. And he said, the only person went strong for drink this thing, so you could drink them as well, too. I could choke on it, and it would cause that kind of damage as well, too. You know, for me, if the pathologist examined those 
uh, if it's due to hydrochloric acid, you will see that there's hydrochloric acid that is causing this. If it's due to chlorine, you will see that it's chlorine that is causing this. If it's due to if it's due to another kind of chemical, you will know that this is what is causing this kind of damage that it has. So I for one I would rather use the word concussion than say it was um, it is one thing. Yes, it's one thing. I would take I would just feel no, like say there were the many things that were put in engine oil. That's why there were many reports in the media. That's why I asked Pepe Room. Pepe Room, you are aware of that, right? There was many reports, yes. That said it was engine oil. That oh, it must be engine oil. Uh, blah 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 blah. From this, reading this report, I knew it was not engine oil. Mm. My humble opinion. I may be wrong. I'm not a pathologist. I'm not a. But I'm not sure engine oil has the capacity to cause this. And like doctor said. Mixing gene, mixing uh, all these different different things to get a concoction that gives you a buzz on a certain level, yes, is not out of place. Yeah, but that if we also have to narrow this down to what is available in a school premises, because we know that this happened in the school premises. So we need to... Amazing, all these butter schools, what they can sneak in. They could sneak in. Yeah, that's true. They, they can send people. They, they, send to buy it. they have bleach to wash their clothes. Children can have bleach mm. to wash their clothes. There are many caustic substances around, um, around an environment that uh, can be passed as, I needed to wash my clothes, or we needed to mop the floor. Um, you understand? Mm. Or they could, have, they, could have taken, they could have taken neat alcohol for ventilated spirits from... Mm. Sorry, what? Reagent in the science lab. Taste buds, God bless you. Yes, all science the, lab. Reagent. Thank you, taste buds. Now, we can also have a cocktail of even hard drugs, if you permit me. There are some hard drugs. I when agree with you. Together with certain things can induce these kind of... Um, uh, uh, results. So, mm. us having this discussion is not enough. Us preventing another Sylvester in the making is where our job really lies. Because right now, we need to have all these discussions. Your children are resuming school next week. Go and ask your school if the children have access to reagents in the biology lab mm -hmm. or the chemistry lab let us be sure and how do you that stop them from having access to things that are that could be harmful yes the blunt force is understandable five boys can lock a door and keep you inside and and yes. it's a, i'm more and one, where did they get something that can induce such gastric erosion in such a short time where what could but that, that is some... freeze. isn't that premeditated for them to come back and premeditated because that seems premeditated. You dial the button that neither me, you, or doctor are qualified to answer. So if we have a lawyer in the house, please raise your hands. It is so I can give the opinion from that is going to now be my humble opinion based on what I am seeing and hearing, that the likelihood that it's premeditated is high, but we need a lawyer to actually establish from the fact that there's a possibility of a premeditated uh, injury. Should we bring up Dr. Kemiolu Lawyer here? Yes, I think we should. I think we should. Okay. So, um, because we're about to round off, so for just five minutes, Dr. Kemiolu Lawyer, would like to invite you to give your own opinion on the matter. So, uh, please remember that these are opinions. They are not facts. Please try not to state anything as fact. Just give your opinion. Every human is entitled to their opinion. I've had my pepper room has had hers. And doctor has had more fact because he is now a qualified uh, medical practitioner. So, Doctor Kemi, lawyer, a uh, First of all, freeze. Happy New Year, Doctor Kemi. 
Happy how are you? Pepper Room, how are you? Who is the doctor in there? Uh, Dr. Frankenstein from Saudi Arabia, trained in uh, Nigeria, worked, we are so lucky, worked with a pathologist. Dr. Frankenstein, how are you? Pepper Room, how are you? Freeze, how Frank are you? Frank okay. No, not Frankenstein. Let, I'm not even supposed to talk because I have an invitation from the police, so I heard. The problem with that invitation now is that it may not even happen, okay? Father asked them to invite me because of something I said. I'm an investigative journalist. Until you guys get that, nothing happens. Okay, Punch, Vanguard, all these newspapers were calling me a blogger. Okay, they were calling me a blogger and social media personality. I haven't blogged for five years. Blogging is my part time. So when Falana was sending an invitation saying, invite that blogger. Okay, and the police was like, we have an investigative journalist here. And my lawyer was like, this is her profession. She investigates things. So at the end of the day, until they get that together, nothing happens. Dr. Frankenstein, yes. hydrocarbons. Some of the stuff we're talking about here, these kids that are all yelling and yapping me, they can't understand it. Dr. Frankenstein, hydrocarbons. You know about hydrocarbons. Of course they do. Exactly. Xylene, hexane. All these things are in chemistry labs in the schools. Okay, and the components of these hydrocarbons also make things like engine oil, petrol, kerosene. What's in the average boot of anyone in Nigeria? Someone asked me that in America yesterday, an American journalist I worked with. What is in the average trunk of an American? You'll see the stuff that will, um, what's it called, charge the um, battery and stuff. In, an, in a Nigerian boot, what's the first thing you see? A hydrocarbon, petrol for the generator, kerosene for something. You understand what I'm saying? Mm, yes. Engine oil, things like that. Okay? Now, I may have said engine oil, but the point is that I'm in a situation where people are calling me and giving me new tips. Okay? When somebody gives me a new tip and says, oh, Hush Puppy has been taken to America. Hush Puppy has been... If somebody gives me a new tip, my job is to put that new tip out there and get more new tips. That's all I do. Okay? If you don't want the news tip, let everybody die, okay? This is the problem in Nigeria. We have no journalists to investigate things. The big newspapers won't do it. The big television stations won't do it. But the independent ones like me who have no money will run around doing this stuff, trying to get facts out. Look at what has happened. Look at what has happened. Dr. Frankenstein, I'm sorry I'm yelling. Pepper Room, I'm sorry I'm yelling. Look at what has happened. Nobody has been tracked for manslaughter. Nobody has been tried for murder. Forget murder, manslaughter. Everybody's gone home for Christmas and New Year's. Something is wrong here, okay? And I call it the Aramani mob. Everybody's in this mob. Where are the activists? Go to my Facebook page, I've posted my statement. There are 57 phone numbers that called me and threatened me. Celebrities wanted to beat me. They posted my house. My landlord got angry and said that whoever posted that house will be in trouble with him. If anything happens to life or property at his property. My phone number was posted. People were threatening to beat me. It is not a joke. It is not a joke. I can't use my phone. I can't do anything. People are calling me from abroad. It is straight up wrong. This year is 2022. Happy New Year, by the way, doctor. Happy New Year, Pepper Room. But this year, I'm not doing anything. I'm minding my business. I want to watch Nigerians die every day. Insurgency, killings, kidnappings. I'll be watching. A mother reached out to me. She said her son is Don Davis, Deborah Okezi. She said, I want to thank you for what you're doing. Her case, they abused her son in a school, Don Davis. I never got involved. But she says she's watching everything. And it is straight up wrong. And it's all threatening me. Everybody threatening me. Look at the autopsy. What does it say? Does it say what I said? It said exactly what I was saying. And a human rights lawyer in America will not tell the police in America to invite a journalist for a reckless statement. That journalist can destroy the case. They have not done that invitation now. Odumosu has been promoted. He's leaving. The chief of police is leaving. He said he won't let that case die, even though he leaves. Now, all this.
the people taking care of this case in different parts of the police department, okay? I'm not happy because there is no manslaughter or murder charge. Pepe Room said something. She said some of these things were premeditated. Doctor, do you understand that part very well? Did you get what she said there? The problem Don't I you think some things were premeditated? Can be premeditated is we have to be legally clear. We have to make sure that we don't say things that they can pick us up for. Let's no, no. What I'm okay, let me just say this. We, let me we, explain it. It's premeditated. Okay. Freeze Motik Boy, Motik Boy, but listen to this. Anyone that has a brain who can really, you know, instead of all these yapping Kemi and all that, I'm 57 going on 58. Anyone, we're going to use the American system because everybody doesn't want to hear the American system. Until it happens to you, you will not want to know the American system. First degree murder means you planned it. You wanted to kill someone. Okay? That's first degree murder. Second degree murder is the same as manslaughter. Okay? My brother died at 17. He was hit by a car, a speeding van. Five of them were hit. He died. Other people paralyzed and all that. That drunk driver did not plan it. So they charged him with manslaughter, second degree murder. Okay? Premeditated murder is you plan something and you want to actually kill someone. I would not say this Aramani case was premeditated. Why? No, um, because Dr. Kemi, what I, I meant premeditated, I'm talking about the, the substance I call that he's giving because you have Pe to Pepe go and get it. One, Pepe Room, give me just one second. Doctor, I want you to hear okay. this. What I call this case from the beginning was hazing. It was a hazing. Explain to these children, freeze. This is happening every day in America. You want to join a fraternity or cult or something, they'll haze you. Drink this, drink that. Alcohol is killing all our children in But he in couldn't America have been hazing, Dr. Kemi. He, he couldn't what do you have say, been hazing. That's the problem with this case. The reason, what do you why, say? I'm, the reason why I'm saying he couldn't have been hazing is because it was a case of boys coming together, right? And remember, right. there was a period where Sylvester told his parents that these same boys have bullied him before. So if he was okay with it and he was taking it like, I want to be a part of this cult, he wouldn't have reported to his parents previously. So they already okay. have Pe a case with these boys of bullying right. him. Pe so it couldn't have been Pe hazy. Pepperum, Pe yeah. you said it couldn't have been hazy. In, in, in Lagos, oh, wow. I said, we need a lie detector. The lawyers were laughing. We don't have lie detector in Nigeria, okay? The Oramani parents need to be interviewed, okay? Or go through a lie detector test. Why? If this boy had complained about bullying, why was the school not really notified in full? They were. They changed his, they changed his, um, his hostel floor. They thought that they could... They could handle it. They thought it was a situation where they, they disciplined the boys floor. and changed the floors. The school why did, did not they lie? follow up. That's the problem. Pepe Room, the school why did, did they lie? Up. Why did they lie that it was a football injury? What did that boy not tell? The boy was, at one point, the boy was in front of his parents and the school. What caused your injury? Some people are because saying, yeah, the boy was scared. He was scared. If the boy was, if the boy was scared, I understand some 12-year-olds they don't want to say certain things because they're scared. Yeah. If he confessed to what happened in Delta State and not in Lagos State, why on earth did some who said he had a football injury? That person the is school. to be brought in again. School, I'm not even going with the school. Who in the school, Pepe Room, says he had a football injury? That person needs to be brought in again to CID and interviewed again. Instead, People were dismissed. People were given bail to go home. Everybody's gone home. Did you hear what Odumosu said? We have not charged every, anybody okay. with murder uh, because everyone, we have not seen murder charges. I don't see the video, so we need to round off. So I need to take your final comments. Um, Pepe Room came first, then Doc. Or Doctor came before Pepe Room. So Doctor, your final thoughts. Pepe Room and then Aunt My Ke final thought, Pepe Room. My final thought, we're just waiting for the invitation. It might, be, it might not be valid anymore. I don't know. 
okay? My lawyer has notified me. We've told them that we're going to come. Once they're ready, let them call us. But the way this case has twisted now, number one, I don't think the autopsy should have been released to the public. This is a charade. A child died here. The autopsy should never have been released. Emotions are going to go up. Everything is going to go crazy again. That's the number one thing. Number two, everybody on bail needs to go in. They say they finished their investigation and question them again. Because when the court proceedings happen, let me tell you something. People are saying there's no justice in Nigeria. There's justice. So when the court proceedings happen, the last thing you need is everybody acquitted and no justice for Sylvester. Okay? And celebrities should stay out. That's my last word. Thank you so much, Auntie Kemi. Thank you so much for your opinion. That is, I just want to give my own last last word. I just say that the autopsy that we have from Dr. Clementine, I believe is credible because he has a history. We can go and do our research on the doctor and, and the pathologist. And um, this case, it just proves to us that the police needs to do more. I don't think they should have stated that there's no case of murder or there's no case of anything that happened to Sylvester that was wrong on their part. We were waiting for the toxicology reports. Um, and everything that we know so far from the autopsy that we've gotten proves that Sylvester wasn't lying about what happened to him. It proves that he was forced to take something and it proves that he was harmed because he had blunt force trauma. So I just want to make that clear. So we're just hoping for, you know, the best results in this case. And, um, you know, I, I'm praying for their family because I can't imagine what they're going through. They're a raw money family. So uh, that's what I have to say. All right, Doctor, your final take. Okay. Um, personally, I had, I've gone through the autopsy report and I have tied all the findings together. And of course, like I said in the beginning of this uh, conversation, the findings, they are all in synchrony, meaning that... Um, a particular event led to another event, another event led to another event. Of course, like um, my friend here, he just said now, we are going to wait for the toxicology report as well too. It's very important, very, very important. Wait for the toxicology report. Then um, going with what Emmy said, um, of, course the, of course the autopsy report is a classified document and shouldn't have been released to the public. But yeah. you, you, or you, you um, also need to know, too, that the public is also involved in this particular matter, and everybody wants to see that justice is served. You know, we're talking about a country where if you do not shout, nobody hears what you're saying. You need to really shout, and sometimes you can even shout your voice, even cut off at the end of the day, but everybody wants to be kept abreast with this particular case hence the release of that autopsy report. And for that reason, I really do not see anything wrong with it. Let all of us be carried along and let's see how justice is going to be saved for this innocent boy that died. Now, whatever he, whatever he, whatever he, whatever he, whatever he is that he took, we would get also from the toxicology that comes at the end of the day. We would see what has been released into his, his bloodstream if he, has, if, if he was an engine oil, if he was a chemical from the lab, if he was concussions from somewhere else. You know, because if you are talking about an engine oil, of course, we need to start. We already close. We would have talked about one thing. I would have talked about how the difference between how much damage, gastric damage, an engine oil would do to the stomach lining. You know, it will not be that severe to what he got there. I don't know if you're fully Doctor, Doctor, can I say something real quick? And you're right. The stomach lining went more than engine oil or whatever it is, okay? I'm just telling you what I was told, okay? That autopsy report shows some very, very big things in there. Now, this is why I'm saying, why were the headmasters let go? Because are they not the supervisors of these children? Where did these children get all these chemicals, okay? And then the second thing, if they had questioned those children very well, they may not have gotten bail. Judge Adiola Olatumbosun, I'm already hearing from the grapevine that she's very mad. She's extremely mad that the, that the autopsy was released on social media. Now, we pray she doesn't dismiss this case. But what we're looking at right now is, I mean, Dr. Frankenstein, remember when Whitney Houston died? Do you remember we yes. had to wait for the toxicology test for two weeks? And then her daughter, when her daughter died, almost everybody in Hollywood that dies, 
toxicology is another two weeks. Why didn't we wait for the toxicology test before we released the autopsy to social media? Now I'm hearing the judge is not really happy. This is not good. Those children are home, okay? The international passports have been deposited. They can't leave their estate two kilometers, so they can't even get to the gate of the estate. Some people are saying that they were never arrested. Yes, they were arrested. But now the house masters have gone home for the new year and they're supposed to be the super, supervisors. Some are even saying that the school might even open in ne next week. This is a mess and Chief Ojumosu is leaving. I think they should stop releasing anything on social media. It's damaging the case. It's really damaging the case. Doctor, I understand you. Okay, you're a medical doctor. I'm a farm D. I only deal with drugs and caustic and things like that, chemicals, but... In a way, I understand what you say. It's a public thing and all that. But this is social media. They're going to change it into a charade. Some people will even go and edit that autopsy. You know what I'm saying? They might yes, even edit it. Eh, hey, Photoshop. This is my problem. Fritz, thanks for having me. Thank you, Auntie Kemi. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Franklin. Pepe Room, thank you for honoring my invitation. You're the only one I actually went out of my way to invite. The rest Pepe of the Room, Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year, Dr. Kemi. Happy New Year. Guys, always beautiful. To pass our messages without insulting anybody. If you feel that what Auntie Kemi said wasn't right, go through it the proper channels. We don't have to agree, but let's. They even said I'm not a pharmacist. Honda in mob. Mm. All of them mobs. <laughs> let, let, let's. Uh, we all have our beliefs. We've analyzed the autopsy. Uh, you can't tell us not to analyze something that is a public paper. No, of course, of course, it's not possible. I saw it first thing this morning. I waited almost 10 hours before I addressed it. It shows that I also want, I was not the first person to, they say that the freeze was the one that analyzed it. No. So thank you all so much. And above and beyond everything else, we pray. I hope you know, Freeze, yeah. I hope you know, Freeze, that the lawyer has not spoken at all. The lawyer mm. has not spoken. Yeah. Falano has not spoken. And I really advise this Oromani man to stop talking to the media. I've said it four times now. Stop talking to BBC. Stop talking to the media. It is compromising the case. I am a media person and I know what I'm talking about. When you keep talking to the media, it's going to compromise the case. Okay? Everybody in this case shouldn't be home for the holidays. I'm done. Thank you, Freeze. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank and for you. the awesome audience we've had, thank you all. Dr. Franklin, I'll keep in touch now that I have your email. And of course, Pepe Room, Happy New Year. Take care. Bye.